All right, guys, welcome to a new video uh, here with the Kawasaki KX80. Last video, we um, looked at the VIN and what you do for the VIN number is you look at the temp letter and then you go get your uh, handy dandy guide and see what year it is. So this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a T and we found that matched up with the 1996 Kawasaki KX80. So that's actually a pretty good year. Uh, a couple people in the comments said it's the rarest one and they're the toughest to find because of the pur purple um, tank and seat. So that's good, I guess. Um, as you guys know, we picked this guy up for 250 bucks up in Green Bay. And um, we got it home and realized there's a big hole right here. Wish you guys could see it. Let's see here. Oh, right there. You can see the gear poking out. Uh, Charlie kickstarted it and uh, I think it was already broken. But uh, look at how the gear doesn't come back like that. So something's messed up in there, either a spring or something. I think water got in here and mixed with the oil because the oil is white. Or maybe coolant got in there and mixed with the oil as well and turned it white. Um, which a lot of people in the comments again said that it could be the water pump seal leaking or the head gasket leaking, um, letting coolant flow into the engine. Or it could just be rainwater getting in here from being left out on the outside. So we're going to take apart this whole cover right here, take off all of these tubes, drain the coolant, drain the oil, and we're going to see what's behind this gear and what the problem is with that. Um, besides that, the bike does run. Um, we heard it start up in the last video, and uh, it sounds really good. I'm guessing the top end's pretty good. Um, sounds like it has decent power. Uh, it does have really good compression when you kick it over, so that's not the issue. So that's one good thing. Um, and let's see what else. I think that's it. So we're going to take off the tubes for the coolant, drain the oil, and then take off that cover. We're probably going to have to get a new gasket for it because I'm, I'm sure this has never been apart. So it's probably going to be a little bit tougher to get off, but we should be fine. Um, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the whole fix up on the other KX80 Big Bore 100. I just sold that guy for 650 bucks to a, a guy, I think, in Green Bay. So. He bought it for 650 and uh, he was pretty happy with it, so that was good. And uh, we're on to the next build. So it should be pretty exciting. I've got the piece that broke off right over here. Let's see here. This is the piece for it. It's a pretty big chunk. <laughs> so one part meshes with the clutch cover, the whole clutch cover case, and then one meshes with the whole engine case. So it's like right down the middle. So basically what you need to do is weld this piece back in there, right in that spot right there. Let's see if I can get a better shot of it. Let me zoom up. See that big crack spot where you can see through it? This piece needs to just go right back in there. So that should be an exciting task. <laughs> um, I might have to take out the whole engine to do it just so we can weld it. but. I guess we'll see when we get that far. So stay tuned, should be pretty exciting. And uh, I'm gonna read through some comments right now just because I feel like doing that every video because you get a lot of good feedback and a lot of the, uh, the feedback is great and it helps me a ton. So let me read through some good ones here and uh, let the people get recognition for what they, what they did in the comments. So read through some comments right now. All right guys, if you didn't watch my latest video on this bike, um, it's called 250 Barn Fine Kawasaki KX80. Will it run? And uh, we're just gonna read through some comments here. Um, see your name, there you go, a little shout out to each one. Uh, this guy, Joe Peterson said, hey kids, oil is white because water got in the crankcase. And obviously he was correct on that. Coolant did get in the crankcase, turning it white. And coolant is half water, so that makes sense. Um, American Pride said, hey man, good luck with this thing. It should be a fun little bike. I definitely agree. It should be a lot of fun once we get it running. Um, and Mark Collins said, looks like it has not been cleaned since 1996. Definitely correct on that. Definitely needs a very good cleaning. Uh, and uh, this guy said, Justin Blank said, uh, JB Weld will not hold, but heating and cooling off, off the case make it very hard to seal it. You may find a used bottom end on eBay, but I wouldn't hold my breath. 
and let's see what the, what the, what the let's see what the reply said in this. Um, this guy said, I cracked my case on my Raptor 350 from a chain bundling and it made a hole. It was about eight millimeters big. I JB welded a penny over the hole and it's been holding for more than three years. Keep in mind my Raptor is air cooled and I put endless hours on it. it. Still runs like a top. Oh, so maybe there is hope with JB weld. Um, so, yeah, these guys use JB weld and hold. <laughs> Mr. Coldwater Canyon said, it's a little abused looking, definitely not minty. Chuck's fault, laughing face. Yeah, Chuck was in that video, forget about that. Um, let's see. A lot of people said like, the water and the oil. This guy, Adam Merwin said, the white oil is from the coolant. It will probably need a water pump seal, also a rebuild, but that's obvious. So uh, lots of great comments, guys. Thanks for the support. And I'll keep you posted on the build. Back to the build right now. All right, since we're focusing just on this bike, I thought I'd do a quick peek of what else I'm working on. Uh, Cause I'm not just working on the KX80. That's not all I do all day, but um, yeah. So a quick peek at the other bikes in the collection. Uh, try not to get off topic, but here we go. Yamaha, um, what is this thing? We just picked this guy up. Yamaha Maxim 750. Runs, drives, perfect. Start her up for you guys, quick. That one, um, Charlie picked up this Honda Spree. Mint condition, it's just, he uh, is waiting for the throttle cable to come. That's why it's not all together. And then this rare gem is called, literally, a Gemini it's called. It's a mini bike made um, and exported from, I think it's like, China? No, not China. Japan, I think, still. It's got a bunch of Yamaha parts on it. Pretty dang cool. Pick that guy up for 200 bucks. Then, oh, here, well, I guess we can do this. Polaris 300 4x4 we got in here. Runs, drives good. Brand new tires. And then we've got 1974 CB200. Um, guy had this in his barn for 20 years. Runs and drives. Just waiting on some new spark plugs because we had some following, following issues. But uh, that's the collection for the vintage guys that watch the channel. And uh, back to the build right now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is drain the oil. The plug is right down here. Hopefully it's not JB welded on or something dumb. Um, and then we're going to take off these coolant lines and then split the case. We don't want all that white oil all over the garage and ground. So let's uh, quick do that and then we'll be on to the next step. All right guys, so take a look at that. You can see coolant clearly coming out. There's that green liquid coming out. So obviously that is not good oil. Uh, that is super milky, holy cow. That's crazy. Then you can see the green coming in there. That's, that's awesome. Oh, there's some re regular colored oil. That's probably from the bottom though. Yeah, so that's uh, not looking good so far. Man, that's white oil. So, get the oil change done and then uh, go on to the coolant. So there's probably not much coolant left in it. <laughs> All right, so I got the oil done. Now we've got the coolant dripping out. Just took off the first um, tube. And uh, as you can see, coolant was in there. Now it's just dripping in with the oil. And uh, next tube coming off right here. Can take this uh, this clutch cable off, this lever right here, and that tube, and we should be good. So that one, that one, that one, that one, and then we can take off this guy as well right here, the brake, and then we can take this whole cover off. So stay tuned for that. All right, so we got the brake lever out of the way. Um, we got the kick lever out of the way. Got these two tubes off, and um, we can take the clutch cable off once we get this loosened up. Um, so everything is off. Um, now we can take, I think that's an eight mil, and go around and take all these screws out. Hopefully those aren't stripped at all. And then hopefully take a rubber mallet and uh, get this clutch side cover off. All right, so got access to the water pump. And I didn't even know that they made a, 
a metal water pump. Usually these are all just plastic, but that's kind of cool. So, uh, quality parts in this machine. Uh, this looks all good. Uh, the gasket wasn't broken or anything, but I'm guessing the seal in there maybe or something is broken. I'm not sure, but got all these bolts loose around here, so now we can take the rubber mallet, smack on it a couple times, and hopefully that gasket comes loose, and we can take off the cover. So stay tuned for that. All right, so finally got the clutch cover case off. Um, first, the um, coolant water pump seal looks like it could be worn. It's right there. So that was probably letting coolant in from right there. So that could be the coolant culprit issue. Um, so I'm gonna replace that seal. Second, as you can see, this it looks like the this fork is bent, whatever this is right here, holding this in place. And um, if this comes off right here, this comes off. And then this spring comes off of here, like that. If I can get it. big spring and uh, there's a little spring in there as well little spring big spring and then as you can see there's the culprit right there um, that's the thing that's supposed to spin the motor when you kick it over and uh, this fork looks like it's bent pretty bad pretty sure that's supposed to be straight <laughs> so that could be the culprit um, because everything else looks pretty good. So I bet you that's just bent, and when you were kicking it over, it like shot something out and cracked the case right there. So what we're gonna do is just order a new piece like that, or just bend that one back out, and uh, I think that'll fix the issue, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, the bigger case we have is fixing that big hole <laughs> right there in the case as well as that huge one right here. Another piece just chipped out of it right here. So let's look at how big the hole is on that case. So we can just order a new case and that won't make a difference, but that piece goes right there and then I have the other piece in the other area. So the main issue is just right here, which I'm gonna try to JB weld this piece and buy a new case right here. That way this will be fixed for good and then, if that ever breaks again, I can just JB weld it again. Because uh, that's not that big of a hole. Not as big as that. So, if we order a new case with a new gasket for the water pump, we should be good to go, I would think. Um, hopefully the top end's all good. It sounded like it was good. It wasn't, um, it wasn't leaking or anything when we started it up from the top end. So I'm thinking the top end's still good. I'm thinking the gaskets are still good. No coolant was leaking from the head or anything like that, like the last KX we had. So I'm thinking that was all good. I'm just gonna try to get these gaskets off the outskirts of the the case, and then right here, pick these off because we don't, we won't need these anymore. I'm gonna order a new gasket for it as well, and um, yeah. So we don't have a ton to fix. It's just gonna be hard to fix that gap right there, that huge hole in the case. So any recommendations would be great. Um, I, I might send it off to get welded too, but that would mean I would have to take out the whole motor and uh, I don't really wanna do that. So I might just try JB Weld first. If that doesn't work, I'll have someone come out with like an aluminum welder or something and just have them weld it up. But uh, let's take off this little fork thing right here and see if we can bend that back and see if that makes a difference, otherwise I'll just order a new part too. So, stay tuned, we'll see what happens. So another finding, if I zoom in right here, we can see that this piece is also cracked. Um, right here, there's a big crack in it, and uh, that needs to be replaced for sure. Look, at there's a huge piece out of it. You can see it right here, that's supposed to be connected. So we're gonna take off the whole clutch basket, get to the skier in here, take that off, and then order up some of these parts. And a little tip to the beginners who've never done it before, um, to take off the clutch, you're gonna use a socket, but you could also use like an air wrench. Um, but obviously the clutch moves 
Let me try to take off these screws. So you can just shove a penny up in the gears and that won't hurt the gears at all. And uh, it'll give you the, the leverage you need to uh, get these out. So that's a little tip. Back to work. So to get this bad boy out, we're gonna need an impact wrench. We're gonna hook up the air compressor and uh, get that bad boy out. Cause that's preventing us from getting the clutch basket off and then getting this gear out. But inspecting the clutch basket, it looks great. Um, no huge dents in it at all that I can see. So let's just take a peek at it. Um, two eyes are better than one. And uh, as you spin it around here, I've had some where these things right here were completely gone and not much was holding in the basket. But as you can see, it's pretty good around here. None of these things are cracked off. No big chips or anything. And uh, everything looks pretty clean and good. So let's just get this bolt off and inspect the rest of it. All right, so we got the clutch basket off. Everything looks pretty clean in here. Looking for any um, imperfections. The case looks pretty good, no cracks at all. Um, so that's a good thing. I'm trying to find the piece that came off of this. There should be that big chunk somewhere in here. So it's not in here. It must just be ground up. I don't know, that's very strange. Maybe it came out with the oil. But this piece maybe flew out, I have no idea. But there's a chunk missing from there, so let's just pull out this gear and see what, what happens. So, I mean, not much. Because behind that gear, it just sits in there like that. So, I don't even think we were, not much even happened. I think it just, bad luck, <laughs> pretty much. So something might have bent in there from before and then broken that. And then, um, yeah, that could have caused a bunch of damage and then one bad kick could do that. So I guess the next step is inspecting the clutch a little bit more, ordering the parts and then putting it back together, cleaning it up and then we'll be good to go. I think the, the top end seems pretty good still and uh, everything else is good. So maybe we'll just order a new cover and um, try to JB weld that. Do you think that's a good idea? Look, come, come here. JB weld that little piece in there and then order a new cover, because look at that. Oh yeah. Or what do you think? Yeah, probably. Because otherwise it'd have to send up the whole motor to get welded up and I don't want to take the whole motor apart. Yeah, that would suck. So weld up that piece, stick a huge glob on the back of it and then on the front right there. And then just make sure yeah, that gear can spin. Yep. Got the chunk. Should be, should be good then. Yeah, one guy said you put a quarter over it and then put like the JB weld over the quarter <laughs> just to hold it in place. And that worked for three years. So I think we should be fine with the JB weld. Um, I'll even just take off the cover and try to JB weld that before I buy a new one of those. But I need a new water pump seal because obviously there's tons of coolant in the oil so it's definitely coming from somewhere i think it might just be the water pump uh, seal that it's coming from so that would be an easy fix right here a little seal in there and then i think we're good to go oh and that bent piece i have to order that too i don't know bend her back, <laughs> bend her back. Yeah. i could just bend it back too the poor man's Poor man's fix. What are you doing under there, boy? Oil change. First one since you've had the truck? Yep. See what this oil looks like. Oh, it should be good. It should be hot. Should be interesting. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. More to come on this bike and more to come in the builds. My Instagram is two underscore vintage underscore. And uh, yeah, go check it out. I do behind the scenes. And what else? Anything else? Anything to add, boy? No. Alright guys, until next time, we are out. <laughs> what was that? Got a haircut. Oh yeah, there you go. So until next time, we are out.